Hey there, amazing work at home moms. Thanks for joining us here at the Mom Desk Club and welcome to my desk. I am so excited to be talking with you today um, about a topic that I think will be very helpful for you, for me, for all of us who are balancing this whole work at home mom life thing. So grab your coffee and let's get started. Hey guys, I'm Laurel, and today we're going to discuss something that I think is going to be really prevalent to all of us, because let's be real, procrastination can sneak up on you without you even realizing it, and next thing you know, you've not gotten anything accomplished, or at least you don't feel like you have. You haven't accomplished the goals that you set out to do during the day, and it can be really frustrating, but we have a couple tips that I think will really help as you're trying to juggle mom life and entrepreneur life and working from home with your kids around, maybe not with your kids around full time, maybe they are around with you full time, and trying to find a balance in that while also minimizing procrastination. So that's what we're gonna be discussing today and I'm really excited to see how this all plays out and then also hear back from you about what works for you as you're minimizing procrastination in your life. Okay, this is gonna feel super basic, but the first tip is to break down your tasks. So instead of just looking at one big, massive task, try to find a way to break them down into bite-sized pieces so that you can easily attack your project without it attacking you. So this can really help when it comes to procrastination because sometimes I think the reason we put something off is because we think it's going to be so complicated and we're like, oh, this is gonna be so tricky and I don't wanna do it and I'm gonna put it off and I'm not gonna do it. The truth is though, at least in my life, I found that when I put something off, I will literally spend weeks putting it off. I will spend weeks picking up and moving things from one place in my house to the other place in my house because I don't want to deal with it, but I don't want to put it away so where I forget about it. You know what I mean? But then the fact is that I actually spent more time moving it for five weeks and putting it off for five weeks and carrying it around in my brain for five weeks than it would have been to spend five minutes to do the task. I know you know that feeling because I can't be the only one that does that. <laughs> so break it down into smaller tasks. Don't, you know, the, they, there's that phrase that says, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Break it down into small tasks. One thing that really gets me sometimes is um, my kids' snack time. It comes around every day. It shouldn't be a surprise to me. They're always hungry. This isn't new. But for whatever reason, snack time is like really tricky for me because I get in this zone and I'm working and then all of a sudden, one by one, people start waking up and as they wake up, they're like, mom, I'm hungry. And I'm like, ha, ah, ha, ah, I haven't thought about this and I don't know what to do for you. And I realized just last night that I have this one recipe. It's called a BAM cake, B-A-M. You can Google it. It's something that Trim Healthy Mama started. It's just oatmeal and eggs and yogurt and you can make a whole bunch of different variations. So you can do pumpkin, or you could do blueberry, or you could do caramel apple, or you could do peanut butter banana, or you can throw chocolate chips in. One of these days I wanna do like a creamy raspberry one um, and use these white chocolate raspberry chips that I have. Tons of variations so it doesn't get old. And it, I've been putting this off for weeks. I just, I think, oh, I should make one of those. Oh, I should make one of those. Oh, I'm not going to, it's gonna take forever. Oh, I'm not gonna do that, it's gonna take forever. Last night, I made two of them in under 30 minutes and that included the cleanup. Guys, I've been putting it off for weeks and now I had stuff that they could eat for breakfast, I have stuff that they can eat for snack this afternoon when they wake up and I don't have to scramble for food because I got food, it's already ready. And when they say, mom, I'm hungry, I'm like, oh great, here's your food, I've got it ready. Um, but then on the other side, on like the entrepreneur and the work side, I do this to myself all the time. I look at this big giant task like a blog. I've got this one blog that's been sitting on my plate for a really long time and I need to just get in and finish it and I'm so close. I'm like this close and if I would just sit down and just put my mind to it, break it down into a couple small tasks, finish it out, then I would be done with it. But instead I've been putting it off and putting it off and it takes so much more mental energy to put it off. So take your big task, break it down to a couple small tasks and just try biting away at it one piece at a time and see if you can get it finished. Okay, the second tip is to set SMART goals. And I think we've talked about this in season one, if I remember correctly, but we're gonna talk about it again because apparently we all still need to learn it. So I'm gonna read this because I can't keep that in my brain. But a SMART goal is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Having clarity on a goal like that 
can really help you finish it out instead of procrastinating and it can be a huge benefit to you. This can be in your home life. This can be in your entrepreneur life. This doesn't have to be in one or the other. So when you have a big task that's really feeling insurmountable and you want to just skip over it and keep putting it off, try to train yourself not to put it off and to make it a smart goal. Find a way to make it specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound, which that feels more complicated. Does it feel more complicated to you? It feels more complicated to me. But if you make a specific goal, so smart goals, make it specific, make a very narrowed in specific goal, like with the blog that I'm trying to work on. My specific goal is to just finish the last three points of the blog and the closer. All I got to do. That's it. That's not complicated. Three things get in and set. That's my specific goal. Make sure it's measurable. I can easily measure when I get that finished, especially because I'm also trying to do some search engine optimization in the blog as well. So I can measure that I finished it by actually having it finished. And I can also measure that it's done because I have a grading score on my search engine optimization showing whether I've got it um, up to par or not. To make it achievable, the goal is very achievable. It would literally take me 20 minutes to sit down and finish it. That's all it would take but I've been putting it off for weeks and it feels really big in my head. And every time I sit down and look at it, I go, oh, I can't do it. And I put it off again. The other thing I could do is make it relevant. I don't really know how that applies, but it is a, it's a relevant thing. It's a relevant goal. All I'm finishing is a blog. It's not that complicated. Like it's not that complicated. Say it with me. It's not that complicated, but I've been making it complicated for weeks. Time bound. Okay. That's the final trick is to make it time bound. Set a time. I will have that blog done in 20 minutes and it will be done by the end of today. That's it. No excuses. I have to keep my time schedule. So if you're having trouble like I am with meeting what seems to be really simple goals and you're procrastinating and you're putting it off for way too long, maybe we should try making it a smart goal and see what happens. Next up, tip number three is to create a distraction free zone. Sometimes this can be really hard when you're a work at home mom, because especially if you have your kids at home with you full time, I can't think of any house or any place in my house that is a distraction free zone. But sometimes if you can really set aside some time and say, I am going to make sure that during the little kids nap today, I am going to set aside 30 minutes and I'm going to work on this one goal that has been just gnawing at me for weeks and that I've been procrastinating. Set yourself up for that success. So one of the things, one of my goals is to film two to three videos a week. I wanna do two at the least. Three is better because it puts me ahead of my goals. So the way I'm setting myself up for that kind of success is I'm creating a distraction free zone mostly by doing it during nap time. And the way that I make sure that I achieve that goal is that I make sure and get everything ready before nap time hits. So while they're finishing up their lunch, while they're cleaning up their toys and getting ready to go potty and brush teeth, you know, the whole routine, I am cleaning off my desk. I am putting on my makeup, making sure that I'm ready, getting my script all outlined, getting my thoughts put together. That way I am ready so that when I lay them down, I can come over and I've already had all my equipment charged up so that when they go to sleep, I can come over to my desk, I can spit out a quick video really quick and know that I'm achieving my goals one little bit at a time, but I'm setting up that distraction free zone so that I can accomplish that goal because it's not, it's near impossible to try to do one of these videos when everybody's awake, even if you send them outside. Cause if you send them outside, you're still having to listen for, you know, squabbles and arguments and who got hurt. And then you're running up and down and outside and inside and you're going all over the place trying to solve problems. And it's still not a distraction free zone. The other way that you could create a distraction free zone to help eliminate procrastination is by hiring somebody to watch your kids for a little bit. This is not always something that you can just resort to all the time. Obviously, maybe you need to only save this for really big projects that you've been procrastinating for a really long time or that have a really specific deadline coming up that you have to meet. So you might be able to hire somebody, whether it's a family member or a friend or do a trade. Maybe you know another work at home mom who lives in your community and you both are really close and you trust each other with each your kids. Maybe you can work out a trade. Hey, I'll watch your kids and my kids for two hours on Tuesday. If you'll watch your kids and my kids for two hours on Thursday, we'll work out a trade. We'll swap kids one day this week, you know, two days this week. 
And that way we can get our accomplishments and our goals and our tasks done in a distraction-free zone. So that's another idea. I haven't actually tried that yet, but I am waiting for the right person to come along where we can do a kid swap a couple days a week, you know, once a month. It doesn't have to be like a regular thing. Once or once a month, once every other month, just when you've got some big things coming up. Do a kid swap, work, with, work a deal out with somebody else in your community. I think that could be really helpful. Okay, for tip number four, you're gonna ta practice using the Pomodoro technique. Now, we have discussed this, pretty sure it was this season. So make sure you go check out the other video where we focus all on the Pomodoro technique so that you can make sure to kick procrastination to the curb and help accomplish your goals as a busy work at home mom. But I'll give you the short of this just so that we can kind of all be on the same page. The Pomodoro technique is where you set a timer for 25 minutes. You get in and you work really hard for 25 minutes. You stay focused. You don't let yourself get distracted. You close out all your distractions. You can turn off your phone. You can block Facebook. Only, you know, turn off your internet. If you're just sitting there writing and you don't need the internet, turn off the internet. It'll help keep the distractions at bay. And then when that timer goes off, then you take a five minute break. You get up, you stretch, go drink a huge glass of water, eat a snack, walk around your house a couple times, or maybe walk around your little subdivision if you can do that in five minutes. Do a quick five minute brisk exercise to kind of wake yourself up and reset yourself and then get back in and do another 25 minutes. It can be really helpful and it can help uh, keep your focus a little more aligned because you're focusing and you're getting in and working really hard and then you're giving your brain a break to reset and then you're getting back in and trying again. Now, keep in mind, not all breaks are great breaks. So find what works best for you. I would suggest definitely don't opening, don't open Facebook, don't open social media, don't let yourself get distracted by online shopping or even grocery shopping during that five minute break because well, let's be real, those things aren't actual true breaks. Those are kind of um, rabbit holes that you get sucked down and you think it's only gonna take five minutes and then it's like two hours later you're like oh my gosh what happened that would be procrastination so for that five minute break you're gonna have to be really really disciplined and set a goal and only do something that will reset your brain whether it be taking a drink of water walking on the treadmill for five minutes walking around outside for five minutes whatever you can do to help give your brain that break but don't let yourself get distracted and procrastinate in that five minutes because you're going to hit back at it again in 20 for another 25 minutes after that okay the final tip is to reward yourself so i always thought this sounded really cheesy but it can really help if you are reward motivated. So maybe you've got a special piece of chocolate that you've been saving for a little while. Make it a game. Tell yourself when you finish the blog, you can go have your piece of chocolate. When you finish that big insurmountable tax, like task, oh gosh, it's like my brain was already thinking about it. When you finish that task, I was thinking about tax season and how taxes are coming up. So maybe it is taxes. Maybe taxes are the thing that you need to focus on. Give yourself a reward when you accomplish even the little tasks. If you just bite off the little task, like organizing all of your expenses for a category, <laughs> pick one category, organize all the expenses into that category, and then take a break, go enjoy a piece of chocolate, and then get back at it and bite off another task, and then you can enjoy another piece of chocolate. Maybe it's a really big task. Like right now, I have a whole bunch of stuff downstairs that I need to take into the thrift store because they're things that we don't really need anymore and they're still in really good condition. I don't want to throw it away. I don't want to dispose of it. I want to donate it, but I'm having a lot of trouble trying to get it to the donation facility. So something I have in mind for myself is to pick a day, either this week or next week, and put it all in my car. And once I drop it off, I'm going to stop at my favorite coffee shop in town and get myself something special. That can be a really easy way to kind of motivate yourself to get it done. Obviously, it feels kind of silly. It's like, this task would have been really easy. I should have just done it. Yeah, but you didn't. And you put it off for three months. So you might need a reward to kind of help yourself get over the hump and get to it. Okay, bonus tip. And it sounds really simple. But one of the ways to fight procrastination is to just do it. So one of the things I've been realizing is I have a tendency to pick things up and move them, but not put them back where they belong. And I realized one day that that is taking so much energy because not only am I picking up and moving it out of the way, but then I also then have to pick it up and go put it away. When you grab something, go put it where it belongs. Don't just move it, go put it away. Sometimes you can't always do that because you think, oh, it's gonna take me forever. 
but I promise you think it's gonna take forever and it only takes you a couple seconds so go put the item away go do the task that you've been putting off instead of just putting it off it could even be as simple as just wiping down the bathroom sink every morning in your head you're like oh I'll get to that in a little bit Oh, I'll get to that don't don't do that just tell yourself I'm gonna take two minutes I'm gonna get a rag out, I'm gonna rinse off the top of the sink. Now it's gonna be sparkling and shining, I'm gonna smile every time I see it. It's gonna be very mood boosting because I'm gonna be like, look at what I did, I did this and this the sink is clean and sparkling every time you go into your bathroom. And then you have that to motivate you throughout the day instead of every time you go in the bathroom and you look at the dirty sink and you go, oh, why, why can't I just get this done? It's a whole lot easier. Spend two minutes, clean the sink, and you are really gonna thank yourself for it. So that's my bonus tip. That's something I've been working through for a little while, is just doing the task. Just do it, just do it. Don't put it off, don't procrastinate on it. Don't say it's gonna take you 10 hours because it's only gonna take you 10 seconds. Just do the task, don't lie to yourself. All right, that's it for today. Whew. Remember, you're not alone. I am fairly certain that all of us are dealing with procrastination in some way or other. It's just a human thing. And if you think you're not dealing with procrastination in any form, in any area of your life, then I expect you to drop some comments down below and let us know what habits you have set in place to keep yourself from procrastinating in every area. Otherwise, we're all gonna be a little suspicious and think that you're just pulling our leg. So <laughs> just remember, you're not alone. We all face this in some capacity, in some way in our lives, and it's okay. And we can all work together and we can all suggest different things that make this easier for our life. Because I know that if I share experiences in my life, it's going to help trigger something for you in your life to help you make improvements. So I really want to see comments down the bottom about what you are doing to help fight procrastination in your life. as a big, busy work at home mom. And until next week, bye. Okay. Before I completely log off and get back to all the regular things in my day, I want to talk about next episode. So we are going to talk about setting realistic time expectations. I think this is going to be really helpful because I have a tendency to say, oh, that'll only take me 10 minutes. Of course I'll do it. And then an hour later, I'm like, that was a lot more intensive than I thought it was going to be. And that was not a realistic time expectation. Or as we talked about in this procrastination video, I say, oh, it'll take me three hours. I can't do it. And then it takes me five minutes. So next time we're going to talk about setting realistic time expectations as a busy work at home mom. Bye.